Hello again, everybody. Scott Casper here along with Tony Hager. This is Global Wrestling News. We're going to start with a look at the non-Olympic weight world team trials and women's freestyle. Former collegiate teammates came out on top and will now represent the U.S. in Hungary. Sarah Hildebrandt took out the top seed Kelsey Campbell in 55 kilos in the semis and moved into the finals to face three-time world team member Whitney Condor. Hildebrandt hit a four-point headlock for a 4-3 decision in bout one and then hit another front headlock in the second to sweep the series. 3-2. Were you surprised to see Sarah get past the first and second seeds, Tony? Well, Sarah has always been really close. She's like been right there. She's had some minor issues with her knee from what I've been told. And it looks like those are past her now because she went through, had some big, big, uh, big throws there to get past this couple these couple of matches. But she's just been right there. And now this might be her time. I mean, she's never been to a world championship event. So I think we're going to learn a lot about Sarah. I think we're all hoping for a Haley Agello type performance. Yeah, if he, she can match what Haley's been able to do, make it to the Olympics, that's where that's where she wants to be. My favorite thing about Sarah is she's got really quick feet yeah. from the neutral position. She has the ability to get to her angles a lot faster than maybe some of these older gals at this weight class. So um, if she consistently does that and looks for those aggressive shots and, and finds those angles, she might do well at the international level. You know what I like about it? We're talking about women's wrestling, and women's wrestling continues its pattern of growth. Let's go to 60 kilos. Allie Reagan made her fourth U.S. world team with a two-match sweep over Mallory Velti. Uh, Reagan hit a four-point hip toss and two takedowns for an 8-2 decision in bout one, and then rode an early three-point lead to a 4-1 victory in bout two. Yeah, she's the star here. She She's the one that Sarah's trying to get to be. She's really been kind of in the shadows of Marulis and Gray, so this might be her opportunity to put her name on USA Wrestling. I mean, she's always done real well domestically, but she's had a really hard time scoring against foreigners, and that's what she has to figure out. Yeah, on, on the international level, you have to be able to find that aggressive style. She yeah. really kind of doesn't take a ton of risk. She doesn't give up a lot of points, though, But so she's going to have to figure out you know, taking that success on the domestic level, take it internationally, and, and be good from the top position, from the bottom position, all around in order to put a medal around her neck. And I think Coach Terry Steiner likes what he sees as far as how these women are improving. Let's move on to men's freestyle. World bronze medalist James Green earned an automatic trip to the finals where he faced the second seat from Sunkiss Kids, Jordan Oliver. Green scored on a step out and a shot clock violation for a 2-1 victory and then hit a counter ankle pick midway through the second bout to take the series 4-3. Oliver looked massive here. He was so, so, so close to taking down Green, who is a world bronze medalist. Kind of wondering if he'll hang him up after this. I mean, th or this might have given him a little bit of more hope that he has the opportunity to make this world team. So it'll be interesting to see if he, you know, tries to go for that. And, you know, maybe another year, maybe another two. I I'd be shocked to see him go for a full cycle. All right. I'm not sure I agree with the automatic birth for James, but uh, he did have what? World trials twice last year, so I guess this evens everything up. <laughs> yeah, he, he had to go through the ringer there. But in the end, rules are rules. We didn't see a ton of wrestlers sitting in the finals like we did in Iowa City because there was only two weight classes contested right. for this non-Olympic world team trial. So it, that's why you didn't see those big names there. There was only green. But you know, in the end, that's I think that's the best way we have to do it. There might be a, a new way to do it, but uh, you know those, those haven't been, uh, you know, talked about of changing it anytime soon. All right. And another one versus two matchup at 61. Logan Steber faced another former Big Ten star, Tyler Graff. Steber hit three takedowns and two gut wrench turns for a 10-0 attack in bout one and did pretty much the same thing in the second. Two takedowns and three turns for another 10-point victory. I talk about a sign of relief out of the Steber camp. I, I feel like we're we're talking about him just kind of in the shadows. He hasn't been able to break through as a freestyle wrestler. Obviously, four-time Division One national champ. He's had some freestyle success on the youth level, but hasn't come to this senior level. And this may be my, his opportunity. Go to the Worlds, bring home a medal, but he's got a lot, a lot to, to uh, accomplish to make that happen. I think Logan, more than anybody perhaps, has been a victim of the new weight classes. Probably too big for 57, too small for 65. Yeah, exactly. He's 100% he's a tweener in there. You see at 65 where he couldn't finish those shots against those bigger guys. This was really just a perfect setup for him. Not a big weight cut for him. He was able to move guys around with his heavy hands and take those shots that we've known known him for. All right, let's move to Greco Alejandro. 
Alejandro Sancho and Christopher Gonzalez traded victories in the final series at 71. In the third, Gonzalez scored on a late counter shot and made his first world team 4-1. Tony, who is Christopher Gonzalez? Honestly, does does anyone know a lot of these Greco guys? I mean, fivepointmove.com, they're doing a better job of really kind of educating people, right. but they're still kind of educating the Greco-only people. So what we have to do, and we've said this time and time again, we need to get these college stars like a Logan Sieber to give Greco a try so those guys are stars before they even get to the Greco level. I, mean, I don't know who Gonzalez is. <laughs> Honesty. Finally, U.S. Greco has underperformed, so I'm all in for seeing some new faces in the lineup, especially after what happened at the Olympics. Yeah, in order for it to grow in popularity, USA Wrestling either has to dump equal amount of money into the Greco program, or we do need to see those big college stars go right into Greco full-time. All right, with just one more wait up for grabs, 2015 World Team member and number one seed Patrick Martinez squared off with Army teammate John Anderson. Martinez took the first bout on a pair of passivity calls, 3-1, but Anderson even the series with a four-point toss and a 4-2 victory of his own. Holding a one-point lead in the third, Martinez hit a takedown on the edge of the mat and then held on for a 4-1 victory. Now, this is a name that I think people are familiar with. He's been around. He's he, he is that Greco star, I guess you could say, in the making. John Anderson is right there with him. But Martinez always seems to get the better side of things. All right, another young guy with a lot of years in front of him, our estimation anyway. We're going to see a lot more of Patrick Martinez over the next two cycles. Not only Patrick Martinez, but there's a whole new level of cadets and juniors coming in at this Greco level that I think are on the rise. You know, So I expect them to be the ones contending for world teams and Olympic teams here this cycle all in all a great weekend for us all those of you that made it to new york that is we appreciate the new york athletic club and all of their hospitality time for a quick time out you're watching global wrestling news thanks to my pride mats we'll be back after this in this town there's only one pizza joint that has your best interest in mind they make every single pie from scratch the freshest ingredients, 100% real mozzarella. Oh, and if your engine's running a quart low, well, they can take care of that too. Casey's, famous for pizza. Right now, get free breadsticks with the purchase of any large made from scratch pizza. Well, good news for USA Wrestling fans. They've hired Brent Metcalf, the former Hawkeye, as the new developmental coach for Freestyle. Metcalf will work under National Freestyle head coach Bill Zadick to develop wrestlers at the cadet and junior level. Joining GWN for the very first time, we welcome Brent Metcalf. Brent, thank you so much. How are you? 
Yeah, th- thank you. I appreciate it. It's, it's a good opportunity. I'm really excited about it. Has this been something that has been in the works for a little while, or did it just recently happen? Because we we all thought that you're going to be staying around Iowa City for a while, helping out the high school team. And did this just kind of just fall in your lap? Um. Yeah. Everything did just kind of fall the way it fell. I don't think I had any plans for. Um, I, I definitely didn't have any plans for the high school thing to go down the way it did. And then the U.S. wrestling job, the, to, the way that happened is if you would ask me this, let's say six months ago. Um, but that's okay. I'm a man of faith, and I'm a man that believes things happen for the way the way they got to. So, um, yeah, just different opportunities fell in place, and specifically the U.S. wrestling job. Um, was one where wasn't really anything on my radar until Bill called me about it. And it did kind of go down pretty fast. Um, just, I think, probably the nature of him trying to get, um, not established there, but basically he's a one-man team there out, out in uh, Colorado Springs right now. So it helps him to be able to have people um, whether assistants or different role coaches um, to help him get going with USA Wrestling there. So um, it did all just kind of fall fast. I knew, kind of, long story short, um, I knew that the high school gig was something that was, I, I agreed to do, one, because I wanted to, but also because I was going to be here in Iowa City until at least May with my wife being in school. Um, so that was a great opportunity for me to be able to stay in the sport of wrestling and, and coach at some level um, while she was doing that. And then I kind of had my radar open for opportunities that will arise after that. Um, And this just happened to be one where with communications with Bill, I'd be able to operate, let's say part-time if that's the right word between now and May. And then May is just a random term. Let's just call it the spring. Um, And then be able to move out there and then take over full, full time from there on out. So, um, yeah, it was just a good situation and something I was really excited about. It was, like I said, something I hadn't really thought about putting myself in there until he called me. And the minute he called really was one of the first times I was really excited. I was like, man, this is something I could really enjoy. I really loved what I've been doing for the past, let's call it six, seven years, traveling internationally, competing internationally. And um, I was like, man, I think that that's something I would continue to like to stay in. Um, freestyle is definitely part of the sport of wrestling that I have a ton of passion for. Definitely one of my favorite uh, styles to compete in. So, yeah, I think just when it was approached to me, it just instantly seemed like it would be right. You didn't uh, see an opportunity on staff that you wanted to, to branch out and look elsewhere, or there was, just wasn't an opportunity for you to stick in Iowa City and, and coach there? To make it simple for you, um, Cards fell how they fell, and and I had to go with the opportunities that were were there for me. Okay. So, is this something that you see yourself doing for a while? Is this something that leads you up to maybe coming back to Iowa City or going to a college down the road? How how are you kind of looking as your an outlook for like a five year plan? Um, I would say that at this moment, which maybe professional would, would say that you shouldn't have a five year or you should have a five year plan. But for me, I'm looking at just the next step. And I don't know if I necessarily jump into this thinking, oh, this is just something for me to do until I can get what I really want. I don't think I'd be doing a whole lot of justice um, or service to that job if it was just a stepping stone for me to get somewhere. So for me, I'm jumping in um, full force to really go and take that job and do the very, very best that I can with it and then see what happens. Maybe it is something that is just completely me. I love it. Um, I'm doing a good job at it. That's the biggest, most important part is that you're doing a darn good job, you know? Um, And if that's the case, then maybe you continue to do that and just see where things kind of play from there. Um, But definitely my mindset is not going into this thinking, well, this is a good starter job for me to do this, to get somewhere else. I don't think that that would be a very fair way for me to uh, go into USA Wrestling's organization. Is there anything you'd like to, I guess, say to, to the fans about that, that have followed you through this, through this journey and uh, that are going to be following you out to Colorado Springs? Yeah. 
Um, yeah, no, I mean, it's thank you. Thank you for all your loyal support, especially uh, through college years. Obviously, there's there's rabid support. But to me, the biggest and, and uh, eye-opening thing is once you graduated and then just to see the support that you continue to have once you graduate and get out of school. And they, in order for me to survive and to feed my family and take care of my wife and kids, it's literally just fans who support what you do. Um and just financially, just as far as our fundraising things go, are just, they want to see you go and not even have success, just go pursue you, your dreams. And to me, that's a really big deal. It's a really big deal that um, they care about me and my family, but my dreams as much as I did. Um, so forever grateful. There's, I mean, you know, again, not a whole lot more you can say than just thank you. Um, certainly forever will be the very best Hawkeye, not Hawkeye, but uh, best wrestling fans and, and supporters in the entire country. So, I mean, I think in my mind, I always saw Metcalf staying in Iowa City with Ramos leaving and now Metcalf leaving. you got to wonder if the Hawkeye Wrestling Club is maybe making some room available for the young studs. Because for me anyway, the young studs are the ones that are winning all the medals. Uh, example, Snyder and Cox. All right, more on that later. All right, after this break, we've got five bouts you've got to put on your watch list for the weekend. That's after the break right here on Global Wrestling News, powered by Adit Wrestling. Stay tuned. Yellow Blue wants to show you global energy demands are expanding at an alarming rate. Power grids in the U.S. are aging while coal plants continue to close at record rates. Utility rates are at an all-time high and there's no end in sight. If this concerns you, call Yellow Blue, delivering products and services that are not only green, but cost effective. You can be independent, safe, and secure. We'll show you how at yellowbluetech.com. At Cookies, sauces and seasonings are business, but food is our passion. Our secret ingredient is Cookies Flavor Enhancer and All Purpose Seasoning. It makes pretty much everything taste better. You can use it on meats and in marinades, veggies and seafood. Try it on pasta and even popcorn. Pick up a bottle at your local grocer and enhance the flavor of your favorite foods. Cookies For more ideas and recipes, visit cookiesbbq.com. Cookies is the one. All right, welcome back, wrestling fans. I mean, we're a few weeks into the season, and that means big-time duels, big-time tournaments start to show up on the calendar, and this weekend has a slew of top matchups. We'll start with the countdown at number five. Rutgers' Anthony Ashnault against Princeton's Matt Kolodzik at the Battle of the Birthplace event on the Rutgers football field, and I like it. Rivals, top ten wrestlers, both wrestlers have beaten one another. Both matches went down at the historic Midlands Championships last year. 
Ashnall getting the best of it in those Constellation semifinals. So this is this is going to be a big, big matchup at the Battle of the Birthplace. All right, feels like Ashnall is on the upward trend, but this could be a great opportunity for Klodzik to get the job done in a huge dual matchup for the Tigers. Next up, Virginia Tech's Joey Dance will take on Missouri's Barlow McGee. This time we have a top five battle going down in Missouri. McGee didn't have the best all-star classic being upset by Nathan Kreiser, but kind of thought we'd see McGee drop in the rankings a bit, but he's still up there. And he's got to face Dance. What are your thoughts? Yeah, this sets up a mega match here with Dance. Uh, McGee might have uh, got a wake-up call from the All-Star Classic. Yep. I like him against Dance here because Dance has another huge matchup, which we'll talk about. He's got number two, Dylan Peters, on Friday as well. Yeah, Dylan Peters, that's another match on our list. But first, how about we take a look at this one? Another match, the same duel, take place on Sunday. LeVon Mays of Missouri will look to defend his top three ranking against Virginia Tech's Solomon Chisco. Mays lost as well at the Classic, so this is a much-needed bounce-back win for him and the Missouri Tigers. Chisco is up a weight class at 149 pounds. He's been pushed a little bit already, so this will be a real test to see if he can handle that bump up to 149 pounds against him. All right, let's take a look at the next bout. Rising star Zahid Valencia of Arizona State versus Big Ten's Bo Jordan. Both wrestlers ranked in the top ten, Bo in the top five in every ranking the clear favorite. Valencia has a lot of hype behind him, but we need to see him back it up against a guy like Bo. Yeah, this will be Jordan's first match of the season, so his conditioning will be put on check. Valencia's isn't the best. We saw that against Ethan Ramos last weekend, but I think in the end, Bo gets out early, makes this match really, you know, slows it down, and he's ended up grinding out of a close victory here. All right, in our number one match of the weekend, we have a top three battle against Northern Iowa's Dylan Peters against Virginia Tech's Joey Dance. Tony, we talked about Dance's big matchup on Sunday. This one can solidify him as a top contender. Yeah, I think he's got his eye solely on this matchup. Dylan Peters suffered a major injury last season, but gritted out an All-American nice. performance. Peters told me at Media Day that he was sitting out just to have this matchup in West Gym. So this is a big one that's been circled on his calendar. All right, the big question, of course, is will we see him? What do you take away from his presser? Oh, man, I think uh, I think Swab might be playing some games here. You know, we know Swab has got some friendly banter. He always has. So if you think about it, though, that he needs to try to get an advantage against him because he hasn't had some success against Dance. So if they start this duel at 125, it'll be interesting to see if Peters gets the call, Schwarm gets the call, because this is a big, you know, a, a dual setter. All right, there's our top five matches to watch for the weekend. After the break, we'll take you around the trending topics around the sport with our quick hits. Stay tuned, more GWN powered by Cookies Barbecue Sauce, the sauce America loves to eat. Yellow Blue wants to show you global energy demands are expanding at an alarming rate. Power grids in the U.S. are aging while coal plants continue to close at record rates. Utility rates are at an all-time high and there's no end in sight. If this concerns you, call Yellow Blue, delivering products and services that are not only green but cost-effective. You can be independent, safe, and secure. We'll show you how at yellowbluetech.com. In this town, there's only one pizza joint that has your best interests in mind. They make every single pie from scratch. The freshest ingredients, 100% real mozzarella. Oh, and if your engine's running a quart low, well, they can take care of that too. Casey's, famous for pizza. Right now, get free breadsticks with the purchase of any large made from scratch pizza. The war raged for generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defend so defend what you have built.
All right, news out of New York now. Columbia University has suspended its wrestling program for the remainder of the season. It was on Monday. Columbia released a statement saying that the university has decided that its program will not compete until they have a full understanding of the facts of the investigation. University officials are investigating text messages sent by team members that included racist and homophobic terms on a student-run website. Now, this is just bananas. This, there's really no excuse for this. It makes you wonder how much we've missed, what's out there that we're not seeing. You know, this is a, an interesting world that we're leaving, you know, living in right now. I don't blame Columbia for really making this happen. I mean, I don't know if they had a, another way out. This seems to be a trend in college athletics, and unfortunately, a lot of innocent kids are paying the price for their teammates. A lot of these kids were still in high school, and this is going on. Yeah, so, so you can kind of compare this to Minnesota's issues. I mean, the drug, I mean, completely different topics, but Minnesota only suspended the wrestlers that were involved. So I would like to see the same thing with Columbia, because it wasn't the whole team, but you know, Minnesota, is, they're letting those wrestlers actually wrestle right now. They're getting to wrestle in open, so why shouldn't some of the Columbia wrestlers that they don't think were involved wrestle in some open? tournaments so there's there's a lot more stuff that we need to get more details out just kind of like the minnesota situation right. it lingered out for months but we got we got to get to the bottom of this columbia deal well columbia one of the best universities surely in an institution of higher learning we hope that these kids learn from their mistakes university of michigan senior dominic abinator and juniors alec pentaleo and garrett sutton will redshirt the season they joined senior captain adam coon as returning wolverine starters slated to sit out for the year I think Michigan is doing the right thing here. Honestly, I'm surprised that these guys even have red shirts left. But you know, in today's world, you see them, you know, set out that first year and they they take that red shirt year. But I mean, it, there has been success from them doing that. Ask Miles Martin. So he, true freshman, can have success at this level. But the right thing to do is put these guys on red shirts and rebuild for next year. All right. Without Coom, I don't see him in the hunt for a national title this year, so I think it's a smart move to sit these guys out and try to make a run for it next year. Yeah, they're, they're not going to make a run for the national championship, I think, with this team, but I think you see a top 10. Top 10 finish is doable here, and that is going to be great for recruiting. In the Big Ten, you got to have those top 10 finishes. All right, next topic, two-time world bronze medalist Dayton Fix has decided to stay in Oklahoma and compete for the Cowboys. Uh the nation's fourth overall recruit shows Oklahoma State over Penn State, Ohio State, Nebraska, and North Carolina. Hey, someone didn't pick Penn State. I feel like we've been talking about that for the last three <laughs> weeks. Homegrown Cowboy, I think the majority of people, some media, knew that he was going to go there. Was really high on their list. I think some, some other schools really kind of, he just took the visit to take the visit free trip and maybe the media might have hyped up a little bit these other schools. Okie State, I think, was really the clear favorite the whole time. All right. Sources say that he will redshirt when he gets there, but where do you see him in the lineup? He said that he wants to go to 125 pounds. He's ranked right now at 132 pounds. Honestly, I feel like he's he's really big right now for 132 pounds. I don't know if he's cutting a lot of weight there. I don't know those details. But when, when you do get into the college level, you've got full-time coaches, nutritionists, so they might be able to figure out a way to get him down to 125 pounds a healthy way, right. and uh, it, it'll make a lot more sense for Okie State. That'll do it for this week's show. Thanks for watching this edition of Global Wrestling News. For Tony Hager, Brad Johnson, and all of us here in Des Moines, we'll see you next week.